Hello everyone, in this video, I'll show you how to derive the variance for t distribution. The variance for t distribution can be expressed with this formula, expectation of square of t minus expectation of t. And we have another formula for variance of t, which is this. It is derivable from here. The t in here is the random variable for this t distribution. If you watch my video on the derivation of the probability density function or PDF for this t distribution, you can find on the first part that this t random variable in here can be expressed with this formula. The u and v in here are random variables. This u has a standard normal distribution. This v in here has a chi-square distribution with p degrees of freedom. Where the degrees of freedom p in here is a constant, it should be an integer and should be at least 1. The random variables in here u and v are independent to each other. Now for the expectation of t in here and in here, it is a formula for the mean for this t distribution and it is equal to 0 as long as p is greater than or equal to 2. Now if we want the proof for this, that the mean of this t distribution is equal to 0 and the proof for the expression of this t random variable to be this, you can find them on the links that I have provided on the description below. So now for the variance of t, let us derive it. Let us use this formula. Then since expectation of t is equal to 0 when p is greater than or equal to 2, and we don't have an expectation of t when this condition is not met, then we can cancel it because it is 0. So we have here only expectation of t squared. And we need this condition. p is greater than or equal to 2. Now for the expectation of t squared, it is equal to the expectation of the square of this. So we have here u squared times p over v. And then since this u and v are independent to each other, then their functions which are this u squared and this v over v should be independent to each other. And we know that if we have two random variables, let's say q and r, and if they are independent to each other, then expectation of their product is equal to the product of their expectations. So we have here expectation of Q times expectation of R. Then from here, since this U squared and P over V are independent to each other, then if we treat them as random variables, then we can apply this. So in here, we distribute this expectation for each term in here. Then applying it in here, we have expectation of u squared times expectation of p over v. Now for expectation of u squared, for variance of u, we can use this formula. So we have here expectation of u squared minus square of expectation of u. Then expectation of u is the mean of this u. This u has a standard normal distribution, so its mean is equal to 0, and its variance is equal to 1. So this expectation of u, which is equal to mean of u, this is equal to, from here it is 0. So we have here 0. So we can just cancel it to be 0. And for variance of u, it is equal to 1. So we have here equal to 1. So for this expectation of u squared, it is equal to 1. So we can just put here 1. So now our expectation of t squared is equal to this. So we can write here expectation of t squared is equal to expectation of p over v. So now for this, it is equal to integral of p over v 
times the probability density function for V. And since this V has a chi squared distribution with P degrees of freedom, you can find in several references that it is equal to 1 over gamma of its degrees of freedom P and then over 2, then 2 raised to its degrees of freedom, which is P, and then over 2, and then times the random variable V raised to its degrees of freedom P, and then over 2 minus 1, then E raised to negative V over 2. Then we have here dV. Then for the random variable V, the range of values for this V random variable in here, which has a chi squared distribution, is from 0 to infinity. So we can put here 0 to infinity. Then we can move out the constants from here. We can move it outside of this integral. And then we can combine this V and V in here. So we have here the constants P over gamma of P over 2, 2 raised to P over 2, then times the integral of V raised to P over 2 minus 1 minus 1 is V raised to P over 2 minus 2, and then E raised to negative V over 2 dV from 0 to infinity. Now, to evaluate this, we need to use the gamma function. It is defined as the gamma of alpha, where this alpha is a constant. It is equal to the integral of, let us use the random variable y. Then we have here raised to alpha minus 1, then e raised to negative y dy. This is from 0 to infinity. So this is the definition of the gamma function using the variable y. So now from here, if we want to evaluate this using this, so that this will become in terms of gamma function, we need to make them similar. So let this y to be equal to v over 2. Let us put here, let y to be equal to this v over 2. And then from here, dy is equal to derivative of this which is 1 over 2 dv and then for this y raised to alpha minus 1 so we have here y raised to alpha minus 1 it is equal to this v over 2 raised to alpha minus 1 but we can distribute this alpha minus 1 for each term in here so we have here v raised to alpha minus 1 over 2 raised to alpha minus 1 then let us make this v raised to alpha minus 1 to be similar with this v raised to p over 2 minus 2 by letting this alpha minus 1 equal to this p over 2 minus 2. So we have here let alpha minus 1 to be equal to p over 2 minus 2. And then from here alpha will become p over 2 minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. Then substituting this in here we have gamma of this alpha, which is this. Then it is equal to the integral of, for y raised to alpha minus 1, it is equal to this. So we have here, v raised to alpha minus 1 is p over 2 minus 1 minus 1 is p over 2 minus 2. Then over 2 raised to alpha minus 1, so we have here again, 2 raised to p over 2 minus 2. Then we have e raised to negative y, which is v over 2. And then dy, which is this. And then for the limits of this integral, from here we can express v as a function of y, which is 2y. Then if y is 0, in here v is 0, so we have here 0. Then if y is positive infinity, from here, 2 times positive infinity is positive infinity, so we have here positive infinity. And then for this constant, we can combine them. So we have here 1 over 2 raised to p over 2 minus 2 plus 1 is 2 raised to p over 2 minus 1. And then we can move out 
this constant outside of this integral. And then for the remaining expression in here, it is equal to this. So this will be this gamma of p over 2 minus 1 and then over this constant in here. But since this 2 raised to p over 2 minus 1 is at the denominator, so we'll just multiply it by 2 raised to p over 2 minus 1. Now in here, this alpha should be greater than 0. So this p over 2 minus 1 should be greater than 0. Then from here, p over 2 should be greater than 1 or p should be greater than 2. Then let us have now the expectation of t squared. This is equal to this constant in here. Then times this which is equal to this. So we have here gamma of p over 2 minus 1 times 2 raised to p over 2 minus 1 with the condition that this p should be greater than 2. Let us combine this and this in here. So we have here 2 raised to p over 2 minus 1 minus p over 2 is 2 raised to negative 1 or 1 half. And then for this over this, we have an identity that gamma of alpha is equal to alpha minus 1 times gamma of alpha minus 1. Then if this alpha is equal to p over 2, then we have here p over 2 minus 1 and then gamma of p over 2 minus 1. Then from here, gamma of p over 2 minus 1 over gamma of p over 2 is equal to 1 over this. Or from here, we can simplify it 1 over. We can make this one to be 2 over 2. So we have here p minus 2 over 2. Then we have here equal to the reciprocal of this, which is 2 over p minus 2. Then expectation of t squared is equal to this p times this over this, which is same with this, and it is equal to this. And then times 1 half. And then with this condition, p is greater than 2. So we have here p is greater than 2. Then we can cancel out this 2 and 2 in here. So what we have here is equal to p over p minus 2. And then we have now our variance of t, which is equal to this expectation of t squared with this condition. So we have now variance of t equal to this, which is this, with this condition, p is greater than 2. This condition already supersedes this condition in here. So we can retain just this condition in here. So we have now our variance for the t distribution. So this ends this video showing how to derive the variance for this t distribution and I hope you learned a lot from this video and to the next video as well. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe in my channel.